Hi. Once again, it's good to be back with you this day. Last Sunday, Darla and I were privileged to go to our daughter Sarah's church and have worship with her congregation and, and to feel the Spirit of God there. While I was away, it was a real blessing to have Tom fill the pulpit at the Georgetown Church and at the East Liverpool Church, Henry Hampton filled the pulpit. And I praise God for both of these folks as, as they love God with a real zeal and they share the word of God in a special way. And thanks to their efforts and to those efforts at a congregation, we were able to have that time of refreshment with our daughter, Sarah. Let us go unto the Lord in prayer at this moment. Our Lord God, we come humbly before you, asking that you would open our hearts, that you'd open our minds to the indwelling of your spirit and of your word. We pray that as we delve into the depths of understanding the scripture of Matthew, that you will draw us even closer to you. May these lessons be applied to our lives each and every day. And Lord, we pray that your hand will be upon those who stand in need today. There are so many that need your touch, and we just lift each before thee, knowing that you know their names, that you know their situations, that you care greatly for all of your children. May your touch be upon them. In the name of Jesus, we ask. Amen. The first passage we're looking at today comes from Matthew 16 and verses 21 to 23. And this is a passage where Jesus begins to foretell his death and his resurrection to that inner circle, to the disciples. Let us hear the word of the Lord. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples they must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day to be raised again. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And as we flip over to chapter 18, and as we continue to look at what in Matthew 16 that we're going to focus on today is stumbling blocks. And in Matthew 18, it is in a section that also deals with with stumbling blocks, beginning with verse 6. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were fashioned around your neck and you were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of stumbling blocks. Occasions for stumbling are bound to come. And boy, we know that, don't we? But woe to the one by whom the stumbling block comes. If your hand and your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter into life maimed or lame than to have two hands or two feet and to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out and throw it away. It is far better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes, than to be thrown into the hell of fire. And may the Lord bless the reading of this holy word. Boy, two passages to deal with stumbling blocks, each a little different than the other. But today we are focusing on truly not stumbling, and also not causing others to stumble. Today we hear Jesus talking about his impending death and his resurrection. Now, Peter didn't understand 
how this could be, and at least Peter didn't want it to be. Peter did not want Jesus to be tortured and ultimately put to death. He wanted him to live right along with him. But because of Peter's sort of ignorance and failure to fully grasp all the teachings of Jesus, Jesus rebukes him. He rebukes him in a strong way and says, Get thee behind me, Satan. Now that's pretty powerful to be referred to as Satan. Satan was working in Peter's life to try to get Peter to interfere in what had to be done by Jesus. It's hard to fathom someone that we know as a rock to be a stumbling block. But here Peter is referred to that, that he is indeed a stumbling block. And as we shift over to verse, or chapter 18, excuse me, we also hear about being a stumbling block. Stumbling blocks come in a, a variety of ways. They could be a stumbling block for us, things that hinder us from developing in our spiritual way, or we can be a stumbling block to others or to ourselves. And we've got to guard against any sort of that. As we hear at the conclusion of our verses in chapter 18, there are some really strong words there. Strong words of, it's better off to enter heaven with a hand gone, with an eye gone, with a foot gone. The emphasis really isn't upon losing your limbs or losing your eyes, but it's really on sticking with God, doing what you have to do, staying in the faith. If your hands get into things that they shouldn't, stop it. If your feet lead you to places you shouldn't go, stop it. Stop going to those places. If your eyes get you in trouble by looking at people or at things that you shouldn't be looking at in a lustful way, in a covetous way, stop it. Easier said than done, isn't it? But with God with us, we can overcome those things. We can overcome the stumbling blocks in our lives. Today, we're going to look at some of those stumbling blocks. First, there are people. Peter, indeed, was a person. He was a disciple. And here, he potentially could have been a stumbling block to Jesus. We know that that's not going to happen because Jesus is perfect. But yet people can cause one another to stumble. Think about your life. Think about sometimes where there is a person that may have been challenging for you that, that really ate at you, that really got under your skin, and you just couldn't stand it anymore, and you, you might have told them off. But you stumbled a bit, didn't you? Yes, I know those are difficult times, but we've got to guard against that and try to remember that we are God's child and that we're representing him at all times, that we need to use our prophetic voice, our voice of reason, our voice of understanding, our voice of love, when others might be provoking us and possibly causing us to stumble. We also have got to guard against being the one that causes other people to stumble. That we are cautious with our words, with our actions. That we are very circumspect about the way we live daily. And so first we do see that sometimes there are people that cause us some difficulties. There are possessions, secondly. Boy, possessions. People often love those things, don't they? They love to accumulate things. 
possessions that sometimes become more important than spouse and children than life itself that people go so far out of their way to get possessions. You remember the story of the rich man who really wanted to go to heaven, but yet he wouldn't give up his stuff. He couldn't surrender it all. But he wanted to go to heaven, but he wasn't willing to devote himself fully to God. When God asks us to sacrifice for him, we need to do that. We need to yield ourselves totally unto the Lord. Are there possessions that might be interfering in your life? Are there those things that you just got your eye on that you're uh, almost willing to do anything? There are folks that will do illegal things. There are folks that will take advantage of others in some unscrupulous ways in order to get possessions and that's causing others to stumble and it's causing you to stumble right along with them and sometimes we stumble because when when we're thinking about those possessions when we're thinking about buying something that seems out of reach we sacrifice our time of prayer our time of worship we work some overtime when we don't really need to but because we want to accumulate things. So be careful about possessions. Be careful with what you seek after. Pride is another issue that sometimes will we'll get in our way. We hear from 1 John chapter 2 and verses 15 through 17 these words. Do not love the world or the things in the world. The love of the Father is not in those who love the world. For in all that is in the world, the desire of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, the pride in riches, comes not from the Father, but from the world. And the world and its desires are passing away. But those that do the will of God will live forever. Pride can definitely derail us. Peter had that issue in his life many times, and, and there are folks that you know and that I know, and, and sometimes it might even be us, might be me, where pride certainly can get in our way, where it can knock us down for a bit, could cause us to stumble. When we know it's not of the Father, we need to walk away from it. We need to do what God would want us to do. Fourthly, power is another one of those issues that sometimes can cause us to stumble. Power in itself is not bad. It's just a matter of how we use the power that we have access to. Jesus had all the power in the world, but he never yielded to Satan who tried to get him to use that power to be a show-off. But Jesus used a power for good, for mercy, for love, to save us. Power used in the wrong way can definitely be a stumbling block for others or for yourself. And sometimes you think you're so powerful that everybody should yield to you. But that's not the case. We need to love as God loves, to love your neighbor as yourself. And going right along with power is position. Sometimes our position can get us in trouble. Sometimes even a position that's of a pastor can cause others to stumble. Because as a pastor, as a Christian as well, we have really an awesome responsibility to live a godly life and to be careful to uphold the position we have, whether it's a pastor, whether it's an elder or a deacon, a treasurer, a Sunday school teacher, 
the church custodian, the secretary, the musician. Whatever position we have, we need to do it for God. We need to serve him with our whole heart and our whole being and be thankful for the position that God has put us in. Sometimes people get into positions in churches and organizations and groups and, and they think they run it all. They think the church is theirs. They think because they say so, this is the way it ought to be. Remember, it's God's church. And we are his servants. And we've been blessed to be called to certain positions. And those positions can just as easily be taken away. Honor the position. Serve faithfully. Even when we disagree with others in the church, or maybe the leaders of our church, it doesn't mean we walk away. But we continue to serve the church and we serve God. And we work through those disagreements. And we don't hold our position over somebody's head. I've been very fortunate to, to work in wonderful churches. Been very fortunate to work on wonderful school districts. The where the, the folks who are in different positions, and some would call them positions of power, they all seem to care for those they were called to serve or all those that they were called to, to minister to and it was never about them but it was about the other people that were entrusted to their care many went above and beyond spent many many extra hours spent much of their energy and finances to, to make a difference for somebody else. No matter what position one attains in life, it doesn't make us better than somebody else. God uses us in those positions as we allow him to. Well, as we continue to look at those things that might cause us to stumble, one of the things that gets in my way sometimes is it's procrastination. I have to admit that that is a struggle for me. Some of you folks, you, you jump on things right away. You, you don't put it off. You can't stand those things weighing on your shoulders. For me, sometimes procrastination really, really gets in the way. Waiting, though, can get us in trouble. Waiting can cause some Difficulty can cause us to stumble, can cause us to look for shortcuts to get things done. Procrastination can be a culprit in causing you or someone else to stumble. When you procrastinate to pray, when you procrastinate to make that phone call that was so important or to send that email or text message that somebody is looking for, and you procrastinate, you put it off, not for 15 minutes, but sometimes folks put it off for days, for weeks. We need to, to stay on top of things and to move forward. Sometimes our passions too get in our way. Sometimes they cause us to stumble. Galatians 5.24 says, And those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The flesh certainly can cause anyone to stumble. There is not one of us who is immune to that. And so we've got to be on guard. Because the moment we let our guard down, the moment we say, that will never happen to me, that's when Satan creeps in. Or sometimes Satan just jumps right in, feet first, to tear you apart, to show you that you're not as good as you think you are. Resist those temptations. Resist the lust of the flesh. Overcome that. How do we overcome stumbling blocks in our lives? We've just named a few today. But how do we overcome them? Well, first, you've got to recognize the stumbling blocks. And most of us pretty much know 
what causes us to stumble. We also know what we do that may cause somebody else to stumble. And we've got to recognize that just as Jesus recognized Peter as a stumbling block. Stumbling blocks, as we know, can be friends, enemies, strangers, family members, material things, and even oneself. In Romans 14, 13, it says, Let us therefore judge, not judge, one another anymore, but judge us rather, that no person put a stumbling block or an occasion for the other person to fall. Don't put it in their way. Don't put a stumbling block out there, but recognize those stumbling blocks. Our adversary walks about seeking those whom he may devour. Let us seek to help God's salvation to come to all. So we recognize stumbling blocks, and as we recognize them, remove them. Just as that passage that we read in chapter 18, remove your foot, remove your hand, remove your eye. Now that's getting pretty drastic, isn't it? But we need to remove our stumbling blocks. We've got to be willing to confront them, not to hesitate, but to work on those stumbling blocks. And as I started out the message, if your hand's getting you in trouble, get control of it. If your feet are leading you to places you shouldn't be going, Stop going there. You know you shouldn't be there. And if your eyes are looking at someone or some things, again, if it's leading you to stumble or somebody else to stumble, stop it. And so you recognize those stumbling blocks, you remove them. And lastly, we need, and probably it should be first, reach out to God. Say, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I, I'm struggling here. I don't want to stumble and I don't want to cause somebody else to stumble. Please help me to overcome. Change those stumbling blocks to stepping stones. Let them be a help to others. Today we have saw many stumbling blocks in our lives. We looked at people, possessions, pride, power, position, procrastination, passions, and I'm sure you could add a whole lot more to that list. But it's not about how long the list is. It's in doing what we said we need to do at the close of our message. We need to recognize those stumbling blocks, remove them, and most of all, we need to reach out to God. Let us pray. Our Lord God, we ask that you help us with any of those stumbling blocks in our lives. Help us not be a stumbling block and help us not to be overcome by a stumbling block. Lord, we, we just reach out to you, asking you to help us to recognize and to remove those things from our lives. May your blessings be upon each one now, wherever each might be. May you fill them with your goodness and mercy and love today. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And may God be with you until we meet again. Thank you again for inviting me in to be with you. Amen.